introduce our next speaker. It's Keith Norris. He's a returning speaker to the 21 convention, and he's a regional manager, reg, regional manager sorry, at Efficient Exercise. He's a founding partner of Paleo FX, and you can find more about him on his website at ancestralmomentum.com. Help me welcome Keith. Thanks a lot. Well, yeah, I saw uh, Robbie out in the lobby when we first came in, and I was like, couldn't really, you know, that's <laughs> dramatic. Awesome, good job. Um, Wow, so following Skylar. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, mention Skylar quite a bit here and uh, just to let everybody know this is being taped. So Skylar had a presentation right before mine, so I, I'll, I'll make reference to Skylar's talk quite a bit through here. But uh, <laughs> Malibu Mark Sisson, <laughs> wow. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> we, just, uh, we just saw uh, Mark at the Ancestral Health Symposium last week, so God, I wish I would have had that when we went up there. Freaking awesome. Uh, so I'm going to kind of segue off of, of what Skylar talked about, the bio, uh, biomarkers of aging. I'm going to talk a little bit more health versus performance. And uh, I'm going to talk about the efficient exercise prescription, or my version of it anyway. Um, at efficient exercise, we give our trainers the, uh, the leniency to kind of uh, craft their own programs, as long as it's under our... Uh, under our dictates, um, and as long as uh, the number one rule is adhered to, that number one rule being that the, that the client is made healthier and made better by whatever that trainer does with them. Um, so my take is a little bit different than Skylar's take, which is a little bit different than Leslie's take, but we all, we, we all follow in the umbrella of making a patient very, very healthy, very, very efficiently. Um, one of the things we have to battle as trainers is the perception that to be healthy, one has to train like an athlete. And I can tell you that is patently wrong. Um, if you want to be an athlete, you can do it efficiently, but you're going to have to put in a hell of a lot more time than what it takes to be healthy. Um, and conversely, Someone, someone shouldn't think that, so we just saw the Olympics recently, right? And you see all these athletes in fantastic shape. And uh, the problem is the general public sits back and thinks that those athletes are healthy. And I can tell you that they're not. Um, if we were to look at their uh, internal biomarkers, um, they're high performing, um, high performing people, but uh, health, that's a totally different issue. Um, these people are essentially Ferraris that are, that are one bolt falling off away from a total crash, essentially is what they are. Um, can they get back to being healthy after their competitive careers are done with? Absolutely, they certainly can if they train properly. Um, but you, to be healthy, you do not have to train like an athlete to do that. Let me see if I can figure out this clicker. I'm a Texas State guy, so we'll see what happens here. Ha! Huh? All right. <laughs> so. Why am I up here speaking to you? What qualifications do I have? I don't have a science background. Actually, my background is in political science. Um, but, but I have been involved in strength and conditioning since the time I was about 11 or 12 years old, and I'll get into that just a little bit. I just wanted to let you guys know what my background is because my background colors how I approach training. Totally, totally colors that. So I'm Efficient Exercises, uh, Austin Area Regional Manager. Um, I'm a founding member of Paleo FX Austin Partners, which puts on the Paleo FX Symposium here in Austin. Uh, for those of you who are interested, that's going to be this spring, uh, last week in, in spring. Um, I also, along with my wife, who is a fabulous chef, together we do AncestralMomentum.com. Um, I do the theory to practice part of that. She does the eclectic kitchen part of that. So that kid there is about, uh, I think that's 15 years old. That's circa 19. Oh, God, I'm dating myself. Uh, we'll just say it's the early 80s, OK? Um, that happens to be at Powerhouse Gym in San Antonio, Texas. What I didn't know at the time when I originally went to Powerhouse Gym in San Antonio, Texas at the age of about 12 years old was that it was one of the premier strength and conditioning gyms, well, anywhere. Certainly in South Texas, but anywhere. It was an interesting mix of 
bodybuilders, strength and conditioning athletes, Olympic lifters, and also Arthur Jones style hit people. I mean, it was everything under one roof. So I came up from an early age exposed to all different kinds of training. I wasn't pigeonholed into any one, any one style. I got to see everything. I got to see the strength and conditioning guys feed off of the bodybuilders, feed off of the, the uh, Olympic lifting guys, feed off of the Arthur Jones disciples. All of that under one roof. So I, I came, I've come up from an early, early, early age being very non-dogmatic in my exercise selections. As long as it works, I use it. Whether it's body weight or whether it's the high-end technology stuff, if it works, it's effective and I can utilize it, I'll use it. So not much has changed in, uh, oh God, whatever that's been, 30-something years. Not much has changed. I still, I still hit it. I still hit it hard. I love it. Um, another thing that, uh, that I had going for me here is I was exposed early on to fantastic coaching. Um, my original sporting love was uh, track and field and taekwondo, uh, kickboxing, actually. I uh, stayed more towards the uh, track and field end of things, but I had a fantastic coach at that time and was part of an AAU Junior Olympic track and field team at a very young age. And uh, the coach, Lemaniel Cook, was uh, wise enough to let me know that I had some natural talent, but if I was going to compete outside of my small little pond, that I would have to work at it. That the small little bit of talent I had was going to get me nowhere. And if I, was going, if I really wanted to be a competitive athlete, I was going to have to work at it. And that was probably the first time I heard that, because as a young kid, I was always the fastest, always the best, always the strong, all, all of these things. And he was the first person who told me, yeah, you're all right, but I've seen kids a lot better than you. And that was kind of shocking at the time. I mean, you know, it's kind of a cocky little 12-year-old. But at that time, it kind of floored me. So I thought, well, okay, if that's what it's going to take, that's what I'll do. Um, also, at that time, a lot of different things kind of coalesced at the same time. I saw the first Rocky movie, um, the 76 Olympics. All of these things really got me going. And also at 12 years old, I met Arnold Schwarzenegger, which is a kind of a fascinating story. Actually, Arnold Schwarzenegger and uh, Franco Colombo were doing an opening at a sporting goods store. Doug knows this. Doug was there. Um, <laughs> I right, we found out. Yeah. Um, but the fact that he actually sat down, there was kind of a break in the action. I was just lucky enough to be planted right in front of me. He actually sat down and talked to me for a while. Hey, what's your training? Is the you know, Austrian accent, what's your training like? Um, <laughs> so, I mean, I was just like, First of all, he was the biggest human being I'd ever seen in my life, right? And he's actually asking me what my training is like. I'm like, what? Okay. 